Down with corruption, down! In many African countries, citizens are raising their voices against corruption. Go to corruption! Go to corruption! It is because the executive is corrupt. Its cabinet ministers will be arrested. Some government officials are finding themselves behind bars as a result, but the continent still loses billions of dollars to corruption each year. Foreign entities have often ranked and branded African countries as the most corrupt in the world. But some experts say such categorization of the continent is problematic. Most of the reports about corruption in Africa are somehow biased. They look at corruption only as an African problem. It is something that is internal to Africa. Several organizations published statistics and, and measures of corruption, mostly based on perceptions. To be clear, those measures don't lie too much, but at the same time, those measures are widely recognized to be highly problematic. In particular, they really tell us very little about progresses uh, that, that may have been made. You're probably one of those who know and perhaps say a lot about corruption in Africa. But one thing many do ignore is the role played by multinational corporations and other international entities with vested interests in Africa. Fortunately, the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa has X-rayed the international dimension of corruption. The problem of measuring corruption in Africa has been carefully addressed in this report by the Economic Commission for Africa. The report states that existing measures of corruption are predominantly perception-based and that they ignore the international dimension of corruption. George Kararash is an economic affairs officer at the Commission. If you look at, for example, the issue of cross-border corruption, a big chunk of that, almost 99.5%, is actually driven by international players. Embezzlement, uh, transfer pricing, uh, manipulating the rules on, on procurement and so on. Lucio Pichi and Mohamed Sali are part of the team that worked on the report. Foreign multinational firms bribe, for example, African public officials or politicians in order to secure um, good contracts uh, for themselves. This corruption here, if it was reported by international organizations that we know, they will only talk about the Africans who are involved in the corruption, but not the external corruptors who were working with them. The Africa Governor's Report identifies illicit financial flows as an important element of international corruption. Illicit financial flows are the instruments that many African um, public officials, corrupt public officials or politicians use to stash away the proceeds of their corrupt their crimes in safe places abroad. The recent publication of the Panama Papers adds to the fact that corruption is not exclusive to Africa, although when it comes to illicit financial flows, an estimated $60 billion is drained annually from the continent. The Africa Governor's report on corruption is expected to trigger negotiations for the repatriation of this money to Africa. We are hoping that we will have uh, renewed action from both African governments and international partners uh, because this problem cannot be resolved only by African countries. i give you a good example, which is on asset rep repatriation. You need co cooperation from um, other countries where money is touched away. You know. Ngozi Okonjo Iwila is an economist and former finance minister of Nigeria, also known for her many years of influential work at the World Bank. I asked her if she thought foreign governments would collaborate to repatriate what Africa is losing to illicit financial flows. It's accepted now by our partners abroad that it's a two-way street. Um, whilst Africa works hard to stem the sources of these flows, they also need to repatriate what has left. But being supportive of repatriation is not equivalent to repatriate. So yes, the will is there. I sense the leaders from our partner countries abroad being wanting to do it. But I think now the detailed work needed to make their laws more supportive of this has to be done. As for Carlos Lopez, who heads the Economic Commission for Africa, the Africa Governor's Report will go a long way to refocus the debate around corruption in Africa. This is a way of saying the debate about corruption in Africa has to become more sophisticated, particularly looking into the various indexes that look into corruption from different angles and demonstrating that most of them are not doing justice to Africa, not because we don't have corruption, but because we really need to tackle corruption. 
from facts and not from perceptions as it has been the case. So as much as we want to put corruption at the center of the debate, we have to do it in a way that is commensurate with the characteristics of the problem. The report also points out that Africa needs to strengthen its governance institutions in order to combat corruption.